Hey folks, your OS Reviews. You're watching our throwback review of the Apple iPhone 5C in 2017. We'll be discussing in this video whether it's still a worthwhile smartphone to pick up if you are on a budget and you're looking for a mid-tier device or as a backup phone in general. This device came out in 2013 and back then it was more of an affordable iPhone to begin with. However, it is kind of unique in its look because it's very colorful, it's made out of this polycarbonate back uh, panel as opposed to the glass and aluminum that we expect from Apple. As a result, the 5C came in a wealth of colors from the white you see here to the typical black, red, yellow, green, and blue, so it was very vibrant. And if you're looking for a phone maybe to give to a younger kid or to a teenager, it does give you more customization options and it's quite distinctive and striking in my opinion. Otherwise, uh, you have access on the front to a 4-inch uh, IPS display with a 640 by 1136 pixel density, which is Granted, not a 2K resolution, it's not going to be the most pixel dense, but it still remains pretty sharp and text and images are still a joy to view on the screen. There's access on the back to an 8 megapixel autofocus enabled camera with an LED flash that takes 1080p videos. And in terms of processing, we're talking about an Apple A6 processor, which is a dual core 1.3 gigahertz chipset coupled with one gigabyte of RAM. Now, Apple devices have historically run pretty well on hardware that doesn't necessarily have to be the fastest uh, compared to, let's say, Android. Um, so this is no exception. It still performs decently on your day-to-day -day tasks like web browsing and some general games, but if you try to push it with the most demanding titles and the most multitasking, it will start to slow down. The 5C belongs in the same line as the original iPhone 5, and it shares resemblance in terms of overall form factor with the next uh, iPhone 5S and the latest iPhone SE. All of these devices have a 4-inch display, just like the latest generation iPod Touch. So it's a little bit more petite than your modern-day smartphone that often carries a 5-inch or a 6-inch panel. With that being said, it's easier to handle most things such as typing as well as scrolling using just one hand, so that's the benefit. When we take a closer look at the design of the unit first, we have access again to this fairly sleek plastic build that feels really solid and substantial, which is a difference with with the older iPhone 3G and 3GS, which also had plastic backs which uh, scratched more easily and also, in my opinion, didn't feel quite as solid in its build. But there's access to some um, iPhone logo with their updated typography. And finally, on the bottom here, there's access to that 3.5mm headphone jack. So yes, a benefit of getting this device is you can use your standard uh, headphones and accessories right out of the box. There's that reversible lightning cable and a precision drilled speaker, which is pretty good. Now, even though it's a plastic body, the ports are lined with uh, metal and aluminum, so the lightning port, for instance, will prevent you from um, getting that plastic worn down. It's still going to remain quite sturdy just because it's protected by a second layer on the surface there. On the side here, there's access to a nano SIM card slot, so the 5C does come with both CDMA and, and GSM quad band variants that you can take abroad when traveling. And the very top features access to a power switch, the side features a lock switch, as in addition to separated volume keys. All of these controls are fairly tactile, responsive, and risen above the surface of the unit, which makes it easy to tap on and to press for accessing quick controls. The front also offers a 1.2 megapixel camera for FaceTime as well as Skype and other video chatting applications next to the earpiece. So again, the design itself is pretty classic and still remains fairly elegant and easy to pick up and use, and there's definitely a lot of accessories that you can find online still for the 5C. As a plastic phone, the device has held up pretty well to regular wear and tear. It's not as glossy as the, again, 3G and 3GS, so you'll notice some scratches and some tiny little bumps and dents as you use it, but it overall, you know, still feels and looks pretty nice after all these years. I had this when this first came out. And again, compared to metal and aluminum phones, it doesn't dent quite as easily, which is a benefit. It's a little bit better if you are someone prone to always dropping your phone since plastic is better at absorbing shock. Um, also, again, it's more kid-friendly and kid-proof if you're giving it to a younger child. This could also make for a decent iPod Touch replacement or an MP3 player replacement if you don't want to activate it or if you're just using it as a backup phone. Now if we talk about price, I would say if you can find a 5C for under 70 bucks, it still remains a decent value. 
Um, again, processing package isn't going to be as swift as the 5S, not as fast as the 6 or the 7th generation iPhones. But that being said, it's so respectable, again, for those daily uh, tasks that you want to use. Um, otherwise, in terms of hardware, you still have access to the same Wi-Fi, GPS, Bluetooth, connectivity options, although there isn't NFC, so you can't use this as a mobile payment device. In terms of capacity, we're talking about uh, 8, 16, and 32 gigabytes, depending on the version that you choose. I would suggest looking for 16 or 32 gigs if you plan on storing more media, um, especially if you're picking this up as an iPod replacement for listening to your tracks and tunes. The iPhone 5C, just like the iPhone 5, has access to Siri for the AI voice assistant, and it recently got a software update back in uh, May uh, to iOS version 10.3.2, which was released on the 15th. So it's still reasonably up to date, although with each new software update, it seems like the iPhone gets a little bit slower just because the newer software is really meant and designed for faster processors, and so you'll notice some slack as more and more features are added on. Camera also isn't quite as good, of course, as the newest and the best on the market, but it remains a decent sensor and it's produced by Sony, along with an LED flash. Looking into the software, I found the main UI to still be fairly swift and responsive, not that much delay or hang up, uh, which is what we expect from iOS since there isn't that much live animations or widgets that's happening and being populated on the main screens. Um, you have access to the, again, pretty good updated software elements such as the drag down shades that have since evolved and been popped onto iOS so we can adjust the screen brightness for instance, we can turn on the Wi-Fi, the airplane mode for cellular connectivity, GPS, Bluetooth, those things, and I can also control music and turn on the torch which uses the LED flash on the camera as a light which is a pretty nifty shortcut and of course I can drag down from the very top to look at my uh, stocks as well as my software updates and notifications, all those things can be handled pretty well. Um, although, again, you can't use this for mobile payment since there is an Apple ID, which is that fingerprint sensor, on the home button. Otherwise, again, your main screens as well, main, main applications such as making phone calls, sending text messages, using FaceTime, calendar notifications, all those things still function flawlessly without any issues. The camera, again, it's not quite as good as the latest gen iPhone, but still does a respectable job um, if you have your expectations kind of tempered, and if you're occasionally snapping some shots for your social media, uh, it still works fairly well, especially if you are in a well-lit environment and uh, you can use the flash as well indoors, although uh, it tends to sometimes overexpose your, your objects if you are super close to it and you're using the flash. Um, otherwise, as far as going into the web is concerned, it remains a decent web browsing experience. I wouldn't say it's the best in the world, um, just because, again, the processor is aging and a lot of sites these days have many complicated elements. If you only use the mobile version of sites, you'll see that it's still pretty snappy and responsive. Um, of course, you can create different tabs and, of course, multitask between that. The keyboard of uh the device is still fairly respectable. One limitation of having a 4-inch screen, in my opinion, coming from a larger 5-inch display is that uh, the keys are a little smaller, so I had to take a few seconds to get used to it again. But uh, it isn't too big of an issue. You have access to multiple languages as far as software support, and it's pretty accurate. Uh, you can also use Diction if you want to use Siri for searching up something quickly without accessing the keyboard. So no real issues there. It supports multi-touch, and the keyboard of iOS has always been fairly consistent and pretty good. So again, web browsing is decent, but if you are going onto full versions of sites like the New York Times, definitely expect to wait a few seconds longer for them to properly load. Now, if we go into things like the App Store, for instance, and um, take a look at you know your apps, uh, you can download essentially all the latest apps from things like Pokemon Go, as you can see, um, to anything that you would really want to run uh, on, on your device. So there's no real issues as far as downloading games, but uh, playing them back, again, you have to wait a few seconds longer. And if you're doing multitasking, opening up and transitioning between multiple programs, uh, you'll find that, again, you do need to kind of wait a few seconds longer to go completely through off these apps one by one and kind of toggle between them. But not the biggest deal, definitely still works for the most part and uh, still fairly smooth and snappy. Battery life is still quite strong on the iPhone 5C. I can still get over a day, about a day, day and a half of use before I need to recharge it. Fully recharging it takes under two hours to complete, uh, which is pretty good. Uh, part of the reason why the battery is fairly strong is because the screen is a little smaller and again, it doesn't have quite as much powerful internals for you to throw at it, so I can manage the battery performance a little bit better as well. One area that I was impressed with the 5C on is really, again, as, as a media device. That's probably one of the 
strongest reasons why you would want to pick one up today. Um, again, because iPod Touches, if you're looking at the fifth or sixth generation model, tend to sell for more than the iPhone 5C now uh, on eBay and Amazon, especially if you look at used models. So whereas an iPod Touch might actually sell for upwards of $100, $200, $300, it just makes more sense to get the same capacity iPhone 5C, even if you don't um, plan on using it as a cell phone, uh, when you can get it for $70, $60, which is a great price reduction, and it has the same kind of processing power that you'll find there anyways, in addition to the same display, which is the Retina display, still very sharp and good viewing angles and fairly responsive. And, and again, for the light gaming that you want to do, it still works really quite well. So again, that's been our throwback of the iPhone 5C. Overall, I, I would say that it's still quite a good device here in 2017, um, especially if you want it as a backup or as a mid to low tier device that you want to use or give it to a child, use it as a media player replacement since it is low cost and most of the software things are still up to date. Um, it doesn't, sure, it doesn't have the latest processor, doesn't have the best camera anymore, but it's still more than respectable. So that's been our throwback. Thanks for watching here at OS Reviews. This has been kind of a re-examination of the 5C in 2017, a pretty good low-end budget uh, smartphone, in my opinion, if you are looking for that. Thanks for watching here at OS Reviews.